Timing the market. A lot of times I hear this. A lot of people will come and say to me, look, you know what, Fad? I want. I think that the market's a little bit too hot right now. I want the market to be a little bit slower. I want the market to be, you know, not this hard. Think about it. Think about what you're saying. Really think about it. You want a market to be slow for you to be start investing in it. Who does that? Have you recognized yourself when the market's slow and the sky is falling? Look, guys, if you want to buy a good property in Dubai, you want to start building wealth, there is a link below. Click it. Fill up a form. It's a short form. It's not very long. We want to know you a little bit better. We want to see if you're a good fit to working together. Remember to hit the like, subscribe, and buy icon. And show us some love in the comment section, okay? What do I mean by love? Like, I don't want you sending me hearts and emojis. All you've got to do is ask us questions, you know. If you agree with me, say thumbs up. I agree. If you disagree with me, you can still disagree. Okay, check this out. I think this is going to be a pivotal, pivotal, pivotal video for a lot of those naysayers or the people who are sitting on the sidelines. Because their neighbors said that the market's going to slow down in about six months. So then they're going to have a better deal. And they're going to have a better chance to pick up something that's going to be more promising. At a more promising price. I've got to tell you something. Ain't going to happen. You're going to be still in the same place in six months time. With even more confusion. And with more, even more reason not to invest. Okay. Because think, of, think about what you're saying. Like. I want the market. It's kind of like saying Dubai is this great place to invest. The economy is great. Safety, security, the weather is nice. People are respectful. There's rule of law. And then you're like, no, I'd rather go and invest in a country or a city that's bad. The rule of law is not observed. The safety and security is really terrible. And, you know, yeah, I agree with you. Maybe that might be the case. And they've said that where there's war, where there's problems, like, you know, it was famous for uh, one of my uh, one of my uh, professors. And I'm not glorifying war over here, but I remember one of my professor name was Lipton. OK, in the in, in Canada at my school, Schulich School of Business. And I didn't like what he said and the way he said it at that time, because he said war is good business. And I was like, this guy, like I was young, like, you know, I don't know, 20 years old. And I was looking at it like, why and how could somebody say war is good business? The guy saying war is good business. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? People die in wars, right? He's like, no. Well, uh, it's right after Yugoslavia was bombed. Okay, this was in 97, I believe, or 96 or 98. He's like, you guys don't know this because he was there to teach us business. He was not there to teach us ethics, okay? Uh, even though, you know, as a human being, you should be ethical. But he was trying to explain a point to us that right after Yugoslavia was bombed, uh, the U.S. and Canadian companies were in there selling them roof tiles, ability to reconstruct the country. So uh, now you might say, like, no, uh, like, why would I go and do business in Yugoslavia? Because things are bad. Things are tough. It's going to be challenging. Yes, but there's a lot of requirement for everything, right? Houses, are buildings, bridges, everything needs to be rebuilt. Guess what? Construction work and so on and so forth, right? It was very famous uh, from what I remember. From what I remember, if you were part of the willing coalition in Iraq, you as a country, you were also then given contracts, right? So the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, but here's the thing, right? Would you like to go to Africa? With there's less safety and security. Now, I'm not like tainting the entire continent as bad. But would you like to go to Africa? You wouldn't, right? You'd be like, nah, man, I want to I wanna be in Dubai. I want to do business. Yeah, you might make more money in Africa, right? But it's more challenging. The environment's more challenging and more difficult. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that a lot of people sit on the sidelines and be like, you know, uh, I'm going to wait until the t market's like slower. Man, when the market's slow, you're not going to want to invest. And I'm going to give you two examples, okay? Two examples. One was, and I've, I've been through this in the past, and I hope that we never go through, through this again. The global financial crisis. When the global financial crisis happened of 2008, everybody and their mother ran away from the Dubai real estate market. However, this is in direct contrast to what Warren Buffett always says. When the market is fearful, you should be greedy. And the, when the market is greedy, when everybody's investing, that's the time that you should be fearful. And the exact opposite always happens. So 
when the global financial crisis happened in 2008 and Dubai started to really start feeling it by October or September, October 2008, that's the time when you should have been going into the market and being like, okay, let's evaluate. What can I buy? But lots of people didn't go, right? Lots of people chose not to go into the market. Lots of people ran away from the market. Normal, common sense, right? So if the, but that's the time because if you had picked up villas in Palm Jumeirah, in 2009, you could have gotten deals at 6 million, 7 million dirhams. These villas are now today 15. Um, and they went up. By 2013, those villas had gone up uh, to, I think, about 12, 13, 14 million dirhams. So definitely would have beaten inflation. But would you have had the guts to go and buy a villa in 2009 in Palm Jumeirah? Right? Things would have been... Like, things are never as easy to the outsider Things are easy to the insider. So if you're in the market, you'll be able to make those decisions in a much better way. Number one. Number two, you've got to understand that when you're actually uh, looking at the market uh, and saying, look, I'll, I'll, I'll invest in the market it's a little softer. Guess what? When the soft period comes, everybody gets scared. We had a soft period, 2007, 17, 18, and 19. And you're like thinking like, okay, this is soft, but how soft is it going to go, right? And then 2020 October was supposed to be Expo 2020. And everybody thought, okay, right before Expo, we're going to invest. But guess what happened in 2020 February? The weird pandemic started, right? Well, the weird pandemic started 2019, November. We started getting news out of China that something's, a f something's happening in the world. Things are going up and down. This might be a global pandemic or a weird pandemic. We don't know what happened, to be honest with you. I still don't know. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is that March 2020, if you're trying to come into the market, you're not going to come in the market. Like, you know, that. but that's the time you should have been coming in the market. Like, you could have walked into a developer, picked up any deal, and we did. Like, I had one of my, one of my clients who was signed up on a VIP program with us. We ended up picking up three great properties. He can sell all three properties at profits today of more than um, half a million dirhams on one of the properties and the other two properties a million dirhams. So just about three to four years, million dirhams up, okay? How? He didn't start in the pandemic. Like, I remember he was moving to Dubai. He landed in Dubai in February 2020 when the pandemic was kind of like just rolling around, okay? By February 2020, he lands. And we pick up two apartments, uh, a, a townhouse and a property, and then two apart a townhouse and two two apartments. And I still remember one of those apartments we picked up was right when the lockdown was starting to start, like like lockdown, bro, like real lockdown, uh, like you couldn't come out like without a without a very valid reason. But we picked up an absolute sweet deal, like you know, we picked up a, a one bedroom. At a price that today that that it's doubled, literally doubled. The price has doubled, right? But did he have the foresight to say, "Hey, let's do this"? Then the pandemic's coming; it's a good time to buy. He's a young guy, bless him. No, did I have the foresight? Like I had no idea how long the pandemic's gonna last, right? But because we were already in the process, we were in the middle of the game. We knew the moves we needed to make. Right, but from an outside perspective, if you thought, "Hey, I want to come when the market's slow," nobody comes when the market's slow. That's the problem. When the market's slow, we're telling people, "Like, listen, listen, the market's slow right now. Now's the time to pick up a deal. Now's the time to do this." And that's the time when most people are like, "Oh no, I don't want to come in. I'm too, you're too scared." We're too scared. So the point I'm trying to make is like, stop being a player. You're not a player. Sorry to say this, okay? You're not a player. You buy one property, two properties, three properties. You're not players, okay? So chill. Relax, okay? Don't try to hit a home run on the first uh, hit. Relax. Take it easy. Don't try to pick up this absolute steal of a deal and you're buying property number one. Listen, guys, there's people over here who are buying property number 20. That's a player, okay? There are guys over here who are buying property number 100. They are players, okay? And as a player, you won't believe, like, try to understand the statistics. Ronaldo's the highest penalty scorer. He has scored about 140-odd penalties in his career. Do you know how many he's missed? 
Do you know how many he's missed? He has missed about 30 odd penalties. Like Ronaldo, Messi's the same, right? Messi's missed about 27 to 29 uh, penalties. They're both the highest penalty mistakers as well because they hit the most number of penalties as well. So they're the highest numbers. So you got to understand, like the guys who are buying 5, 10, 20 apartments, they are the ballers. They are the players. You're not. They have the guts, the balls to come into a market when the pandemic starts. They have the know-how to make the right decision when the market gets tough. You don't. Rely on experts to guide you. Simple. Be in the market. So anybody who's thinking like, I'm going to come in when the market slow down. Guys, nobody comes in when the market slow down. So I want to tell you and warn you, don't wait for that time. There is no perfect time. There is a no perfect time. You can't wait for it. It don't come in. Not coming at all. It ain't happening. So chill. Relax. All right. What you got to do is look at the market, get in, understand, buy value. Commit to the long term. Why do you need to make money overnight? Huh? How, don't you want to have some fun while you're making money? Imagine you made a billion dollars today. What would you do? You'd get bored. You'd get bored. You don't know how to spend a billion dollars, right? So relax, chill. Don't try to time the market. Be in the market to buy value. Hope that makes sense. Remember, hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon. If you're looking to purchase a property, there's a link below. You can always hit it, click it, fill up the form. Let's see if we're a good fit for each other. And show some love in the comment section, which means ask us a question. Ciao for now.